Hello! Who remembers the TurboGrafx-16, also known as the PC Engine in Japan? Answer? Pretty much nobody in Europe, because it never really got a proper release over here. It was released in North America and obviously Japan, and it was a 60-bit console, um, think sort of Super Nintendo Mega Drive sort of levels, um, a lot of colours on screen, very nice, a lot of games for people who like shoot 'em ups but never really caught on. It was just one of those cool things you never saw, particularly in Europe, where they weren't really sold in the shops or anything. I think it got a very limited release uh, through mail order by the company Telegames in the UK, and that was pretty much it. Anyway, as you may have realised from watching these videos for years, I'm quite obsessed with handheld uh, consoles and things. And so, I managed to get hold of a Turbo Express, which was never released in the UK or I think Europe at all. This is an American unit. Look. It's chewing gum and waving a giant foam hand and everything. So yeah, the NEC Turbo Express. This is literally a PC engine crammed into a big old slab of stuff that you hold in your hands. I don't know why my voice has gone like that. And it plays all the PC engine games, which come on these things called Who Cards, that you slide into the back there. And it's a rather nifty thing. It's got a nice D-pad, remember when they made those? It's got a CRT built directly into it, obviously, because if not you wouldn't be able to see the games. And gameplay opportunities would be very limited. You've got two buttons. You've got auto fire switches, amazingly, um, a select and a run button. You've got a bloody great um, <laughs> screw thread for plugging in the TV tuner, which is probably useless these days. These are the digital switch over. Volume, brightness, earphone, plug it into the mains because it eats batteries like a giant battery eating monster from the planet Batron 4. Yep, six Double A's. Obviously I've got modern alkaline ones in there so it won't uh, be too bad, but back in the day when all we had were crappy ones that cost a fortune, you could probably play it for about 0.8 of a femtosecond before the screen went dark. Now, slight problem, I don't have any games for it. Well, alright, I have got around that. What I've got instead, what's that in the bottom? Oh, the connector for um, connecting two together to play link up games with other people. How nifty. Anyway, that's irrelevant. I've got one of these rather than the games. This is called an EverDrive and they make them for various consoles. This is clearly the uh, TurboGrafx Stroke PC Engine Edition. In fact, there's even a little switch on it. You flick um, and see if you've got the Japanese or the American one, which is nifty. Um, what happens is you put loads of ROMs onto a micro SD card and then you put it in here, comsa, and then you stick it in here. And now we can play every single PC Engine game ever released, because I put them all on that SD card. How nifty is that? Answer? Quite. So yeah, um, that's not a bad thing at all, and very good for retro gaming people like myself. And yeah, it works really, really beautifully. And it has a red LED that flashes when it's loading it into the memory. What more do you want from life? Okay, let's turn her on and pick a game. Oh, there we are. I've split the uh, directory into three different uh, A, well, you can see there, A to G, H to O, P to Z directories. Uh, two reasons for that. One, it's easier to scroll through, and two, you can only fit a certain amount of files onto the root directory of an SD card due to the uh, file system it uses. Right, well, I'm going to go for one of the classics. This is well known, this system, for some really excellent arcade conversions of the time, things like uh, Outrun, and what we're going to look at now, oh, the R-Type was good, actually, shall we go R-Type? No, sod it, let's go Street Fighter 2. It's pretty classic. Right, there's lots of different versions of different things. We are after... no, uh, not Space Harrier. Oh, Splatterhouse. One of those games I thought was amazing back at the time, and I went back and played it years later, and it's not very good at all. Um, I'm going to go for... Oh, Super Star Soldier. Another personal favourite. Nope. Strip Fighter 2. Oh my god. One I probably can't show you, but I would like to. This is like a rip-off of Street Fighter 2. Um, in fact, I don't think there was even a Strip Fighter 1, to my knowledge. And what happens is you have ladies that fight each other and some of their moves reveal their boobs. Yeah, it's real quality stuff. Right, Street Fighter 2. Oh, press the run button. Might help. Okay, I won't turn off the system then. This was a big old cartridge, so I think this will take longer to load into memory than most. Is the light flashing on the back? Oh yeah, now we're talking. I've just realised I've probably picked the worst game in the entire system to demonstrate this because it takes the longest to load by far. Or oh, you're an idiot. But on the plus side, I have got one of these that I'm filming. Bum ba dum ba dum. Bum ba dum. Bum ba dum ba dum. Hey, here we go. Thanks, Capcom. I detect a lack of loudness. That's better.
It is, of course, actually illegal to turn off this piece of music early, but we're going to have to do it anyway. Let's hope the police don't find out. Right, where's Ken? You have to be Ken because of his hilarious haircuts that makes it look like somebody has vomited spaghetti on his bonce. This was I'm holding this at a slightly funny angle. Oh, it's Guile, who hasn't got weird hair at all. There's his music that goes with everything. Oi! Now, you have, there's a slightly annoying thing. You have to press run to change between the... Key. Oh, no, you don't. You have to press select to change between kick and punch, which is a bit of a nightmare. I'm going to be honest with this. Oh, he saw that coming. But he didn't see that coming, even though I really painfully telegraphed it. Yeah, that's right. Throw your sonic boom. See if we care. Oh, bugger. Haha. -ha. That's more like it. Go on, one more. Damn it. How does Guile block just by putting his hands over his eyes? If you can't see me, you can't hurt me. And you walk straight into that, you great big tit. And then I think it's the first level. Thank you. I shall put it on my CV immediately. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is probably turn the lights off because the screen's quite bright, so that will help recording. Also, I'll turn that off. And I'm going to go through a few games. And what we'll do is we'll look at a good game and then a bad game for the contrast. And I'm not saying these are the best or worst games on the system. They're just personal choices. So don't whinge at me in the comments like a big comment whinge man. Kadash, this is a good game. Um, I think this was an arcade game originally, I can't actually remember. You pick from one of four character archetypes. Here we've got the priest, who smacks people with a giant revolving chain thing, just like priests always do. And you go off on a quest to do something or other I can't remember. It's sort of a platformy game with RPG overtones, and isn't half bad. Plus, if some snot falls from the ceiling and you smack it really hard and it explodes, coins come out of it. See, it's that sort of life lesson which games just aren't teaching our children these days. Bats in caves! Ah, uh, classic game and stuff. I can't see the bats coming because I'm looking for a viewfinder and can barely see anything. Bad game. Bullfight! Where I'm inexplicably Hulk Hogan boxing. Yes, this is a really crap boxing game where all you can basically do is flail at buttons and hope. Look! I can repeatedly dodge, but it's really hard to hit back. Hang on, here we go. Wow, this is so exciting. It's like the time I pressed some buttons and some jerky men did something. Oh wait, it is that time. Good game, Soldier Blade. There's a lot of vertically scrolling shooters on this system, and this is probably my favorite, if it ever starts. Operation One, that'll be it. Eat lead death things. No, wait, they're probably laser beams. Well, eat them anyway. Look, basically, whatever I'm firing up the screen, you eat them, and then we'll get along fine. Lots of power-ups, many of them quite interesting. Look, I've already got a friend who sets on fire and then smacks people, as all good friends do. Three-way, other such stuff. Oh, yeah. It's a heck of a game, this one. I can barely see what I'm doing, and I quite want to play this now, but I mustn't, because I'm recording videos. Ugh, Wonder Momo. Pretty sure this was an arcade game, and pretty sure it was shit then as well. Bizarrely presented as like a play, being shown to uh, some people in the audience there who have a lot of white headbands going on. You basically play this young girl who gets attacked by a lot of very creepy hoodie guys, and occasionally a big fat alien. Oh dear, something's happened. Don't worry, I've turned into Wonder Person, and now I can kick slightly differently. Maybe, we can tell. Oh, don't worry, my frisbee's come back. No, it's a hula hoop. Yay! Good work, Wonder Momo. This game's poo. It really is. It's annoying. It's fiddly. It has weird shots like that in it, which don't help. And most annoyingly, you sort of scroll along, get hit by things you haven't seen coming on yet. It really is coin-eating nonsense of the worst order, and not something you want to be playing at home. Plus, look at those bricks. It's like they didn't even try. Oh no, it's a flying thing, which I also can't pick properly. This game sucks so hard it could be an industrial vacuum cleaner. Devil's Crush, you knew this one was coming. Um, almost certainly the best um, pinball game released in any 16-bit system. I've dropped the ball already and the horrible skeleton monster's laughing at me because I can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> anyway, yeah, this is really flipping good. It's all got a bit of an H.R. Geiger theme to the graphics, but not as much as Alien Crush, a similar game also released for this system. But Alien Crush is good, but this one's better. Oh yeah. 
plus you can make heads glow by smacking things into them. And if that's not good pinball, I don't know what is. No, it's really good. The ball physics are good, and perhaps most importantly, it does things that a real pinball table can't, which is quite important for a computer version, really. Makes the whole thing worthwhile. Music's nifty as well. Energy. Yes, this is an astonishingly bad game. Um, how do we best describe this? A load of ridiculous, unskippable, shitty cutscene text leads you into this absolute pile of poop, where this small boy creature jumps around near a uh, collapsed building while these slimes from Cadash come and have a go at you. Then you walk off the screen and disappear while it very slowly scrolls the next screen on for more of the same incredibly tedious shit. Oh wait, it's another one. Also, you'll notice that you are stuck on a uh, vertical plane there, whereas the monsters can apparently go wherever they fancy in 3D. Or they can fly. I haven't quite worked it out. Man, that's slow. Eventually, you get slightly different monsters, but generally you have uh, been bored to death by that stage. Ah, Bonk's Revenge, now we're talking. Really, really nice platformer. Bonk appears in quite a lot of games for the old Turbo Graphics, and he's a small prehistoric baby who runs around smacking things with his incredibly hard head that for some reason never injures him. I mean, seriously, look at this. I mean, come on, he'd still have that soft spot in his skull which hadn't healed yet. He'd kill himself instantly. Also, uh, if I remember, he could climb waterfalls. Which is not something you generally see babies doing, but hey, it's prehistoric times, people have to get their fun where they can. And finally, on the bad game list, it's Takeda Shingen or Shingen or something. I can't actually remember. There's like this red samurai guy who wanders around in a sub NES game, waving his sword and having a really weird walking animation that looks like he's got a wine bottle stuck up his ass. Oh, and he can jump. Hooray for him. Oh, I'm going to go in here. I'm sure it's going to be fun. Look, it's a lady who talks to me. Oh, she's gone now. Time to smack these people with my giant chopper. <laughs> Are we having fun yet? Answer, no. This is really bloody awful. It's hard to believe this is released on the same system as that Street Fighter 2 conversion, do you know what I mean? Oh no, it's a big guy who's spending a lot of time waving something around and not actually attacking me. Come on. Oh, hooray, he's dead now. I kind of wish I was, because then I wouldn't be playing this. So there you go, that was a quick look at a Turbo Express, and I tell you, if I'd had one of those in 1990 when they originally came out, I would have been the king of the county and rode around on a mechanical horse made of pure glory or something. No, seriously, a really, really nice unit, some really fantastic games out for it as well, um, really nice CRT for the time, ah, everything's lovely. Except, of course, wasn't released and was very expensive. In fact, it came as one really weird story to this. Came out at two hundred and fifty dollars in America, and then shortly after release, actually went up fifty dollars in price before coming down again, which is very odd. Generally, the uh, overall trend of prices being down, not suddenly up, then down, and then slowly down over a period of time. Anyway, yeah, really beautiful thing. If you can get one, I strongly recommend you do and get yourself one of these Ever cards, which are absolutely fantastic and virtually invaluable because. Uh, you're never going to find all the original games on their own these days. The bad news, though, is that due to the uh, parts and the age of these things, they don't survive that well. There's a lot of uh, dead capacitors and dead pixels on the screen and overall minor deadness inside them. This one was reconditioned, hence why it works nicely. But uh, if you can find a good example, go get yourself one. It's fun! And you can show people how big these things were. I mean, contrast that with a Game Boy Micro. Flipping crikey. And, of course, the nice thing is modern batteries actually mean you can play it for more than 10 seconds. <laughs>